Uh, hi, I'm Janelle Smith from Auntie's Bookstore in Spokane, Washington, and uh, I get to interview today Soon Ju Lee, the author of Every Falling Star. Um, it was one of the submissions for Indies Next um, that I got to be on as a panel, and uh, so we're just going to talk with Soon Ju today. Um, First, I want to thank you for, for sharing this story because it is so intensely personal and so important um, that I'm glad it's out in the world. Um, first, could you summarize uh, summarize the story for people who haven't read it? What is it about? It's my story basically about three words. First of all is a hope, and second is courage, and third one is a love. Um, it's hope. It's when I got to South Korea, so many people ask about my life in North Korea. How could you survive in that harsh situation? So I just literally said, it's hope. Because when I was in, on the street, I, I had a hope that I will meet my mother and my father someday. That was my hope. So survive. hope made me stronger in North Korea. And the second one is uh, courage. Um, actually, I. When I was in South Korea, I shared my story with the teenagers, and I met so many teenagers who have um, so only one, only one parent, the mother or his father, and then also they kept blaming their lives because my life is not good. My father is I hate my father, I hate my mother, but I some I thought that you know what actually, I really really want to have that kind of mother even though I hate because I don't. <laughs> I don't have a mother now, so, and then one day I got email from a girl, and uh, she emailed me, she, she um, s said to me, my story changed her life, and then that was great accomplishment for, my, for me, because my story change, affects other lives, mm. that's a really good thing, so, and then that was the second reason that I wrote a book. Um, third one is um, love, I love my mother, I really miss my mother, but I don't know where she is now, so I'm still looking for her. Uh, that's why I started uh, rescuing North Korean defectors in China since um, since uh, 2013. Um, so I guess that's so that's the reason that I I, I decided to write my book. Okay. Um. So your book is marketed to, as teen nonfiction yes. instead of adult, yes. and uh, which I'm very excited about. But what what made that decision for you? Uh, because my story is basically about uh, my uh, my teenager life uh, from 12 to uh, 16. So that's perfect for them because I mean, of course, circumstances are different. Everyone has different circumstances, but I guess um, we have the same value, which is a courage, hope, and love. So I guess um, those uh, value affect your life, and then they might, um, might, uh, might choose a better life, and also they might think about their parents more, and they might think about courage and hopes to design their future life. So that's why I chose. Uh, that's why I, I tried to write um, a book for teenagers. Well, and I think adults will get a ton out of it also. Oh, so yeah. I will sell it to both, and it will be great. Um, so the title, Every Falling Star, is there a significance behind that phrase for you? Uh, because I chose the title. Oh. Because when I was in North Korea, um, there's not uh, enough electricity, so it's really dark uh, at the night. So I can see falling star every night. But there's a saying that, if you see the falling star, and then the, if you make a wish on, on that star, and then your wish will come true. So when I was on the street, every time I saw a falling star, and then I made a wish uh, to see my parents uh, someday. And then second, there's another story about falling star. If somebody died, and then his, his or her stars is, a, is a falling. So my book is basically about my story, but also my I dedicate this book to um, I left to behind me in North Korea. Mm -hmm. Do you ever s you can't go back to see no, if your I, brothers? No, but I can't. Do you can't. know how they are? No, I have no idea. Oh so. my goodness. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um. So it is a, obviously a very personal story, um, and with a lot of hardship. Uh, was there a point in writing it where you? Uh, needed to maybe take a step back and take time off because it got difficult? Of course, I started writing this book as soon as 2014. Um, it's really difficult to 
can recall my memories. First of all, I don't remember certain names, certain place, but sometimes certain scene made me really, really sad because um, that's why some sometimes I just like tear down my paper. <laughs> I don't want to write this story because, but also three key words: um, hope, um, courage, and love. I had to, I have to share this this value with uh, teenagers. So, but. Of course, it was really difficult to write in my story. If you've read this, it might spoil a little bit for you, but um, at a point when your grandfather finds you and you've been on the street mm -hmm. for four years, um, as a reader, I was so tense with your survival up to that point um, to have this option in front of you to feel safe and loved mm -hmm. and have food. Um, I wasn't sure if you would feel like you could even go and uh, so I wonder what that transition was like for you. Well, when I was on the street, I hate my, my parents, I hate family and I hate love because in my, my head there was no love, there is no family, there is no mother and father because I thought that they were so irresponsible. They just left the home for food but they didn't come back and then my father, my grandfather uh, looking for me um, at the station for four years. And then when I met my grandfather, I asked him, why did you work there for four years every Sunday? And then he told me that that's family. And then he told me that the family, this is a family we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And then of course he loved me a lot. And then actually, um, even though I hate my parents and then I hate family, but his love changed my heart, and his love um, changed uh, my thoughts about family, about love. So, that's it. <laughs> my, I have a 14 year old son who's going to read this, and he's immediately going to want to jump to and help. So, teens who read your book, who, who are moved to help, what would you say that they could do, or how to get involved with this cause of helping these people? Well, everyone has difficulty, even adult, even teenager, even little kid but we uh, have to overcome that difficulty if we don't overcome that difficulty and then we can't go um, and then that difficulty um, makes people stronger and then through when they through that difficulty go through that difficulty um, they find, they will find the value, which I said, hope, because hope is something that really tricky. Um, with that hope, if you have strong hope in your heart, and you will give up that hope. If you have really strong hope, you will find your dream, and you will get to your, um, uh, your point and your last destination. So I just I want to tell your son, don't give up and then hope never hope is never lost. Just don't give up.